Thanks for coming, everyone. We've got here Coach Ian Foster and Captain Sam Payne here. Um, quick hand up. Uh, if you want to do a question, come to you, Ollie, and then we'll just pass the mic around here. Oh, well, thanks, Lori. Uh, Ian, just on Mark Talaya's omission, can you confirm that was for disciplinary reasons? Yeah, he breached the protocol. Um, nothing major, but uh, enough to keep him out of selection for this week. So, um, still love him. He's trained well. Happens. How disappointing to have that happen in such an important week, though. Oh, look, it is what it is. So, it's just for us, it's pretty clean cut. I don't really want to talk about it anymore. And we, we've dealt with it as a team, moved on. So, um, Sorry, guys, can we just pass the mic on? So that's two from New South. Can we give everybody a chance? Thanks. Well, we've got chopped in, mate. Yeah. Question for Tough life, isn't it? Question for both of you. Um, I've been here for a week, and all we've heard during the week is that the All Blacks are underdogs for this game, and Ireland are favourites for this game. And as an All Black fan, it's a very weird position to be in, especially at a World Cup where we're considered to be underdogs. I want to take us back to Joe Berg last year, where after losing to Ireland and losing in Cape Town, Whatever you found, the inspiration, the motivation that day was probably arguably the best performance the All Blacks have put in under you as coach here. Do you look back at times like that, at times like this, facing a game like this, and draw on what it was that you actually had that day to, look, to be able to face it well? Was that to both of us? To both of you. I'll let him go first, eh? See where he goes with that. Go yeah, I think you... It's true going through tough times and good times as a team. Um, you draw back on that for sure. Uh, I don't think there's been any chat amongst our team around like underdogs or favourites or anything like that. We're just aware that we're playing the best team in the world. It's a quarter final, um, but it's technically a final, isn't it? Because the, the the loser goes home. So uh, I think we we can draw on the fact we we know the work that needs to go in. We know that we need to turn up. Um, with an intensity, but also like a, a freeness and a willingness to play. Uh, and we've done that in the past. And yeah, every indication we've, we're in a good spot to be able to do it again. So um, yeah, we're excited. <coughs> and I think the team's in a, in a really good spot. Yeah, I think you spoke quite well there, Sam. Um, look, it's just, the, 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 I don't think the past matters, Marty. You know, I think you learn a lot from the past, but you learn it at the time and, and it becomes part of who you are and it becomes part of us as a team. That this team's ready. Um, we've prepared well with this in mind. But, you know, if you look at this year, we've, you know, the whole thing is about getting ready for a World Cup and to make sure we're primed to perform at this stage of the tournament. And so um, we're excited by it. We, we know that the size of the challenge, we know how how good Ireland are, and, and they, look, they deserve all the plaudits they get, but, um, you know, it's, playoff rugby is, is about who's best on the day. Uh, and yeah, just the, uh, the Cam Warrior selection, I um, felt like Christy was there. Discipline or um, selection or form? What would make you think it's discipline? Just uh, similar follow that the Mark Tilly just wants some clarification. No, it's, um, we, we just felt it's horses for courses for this particular game. We, we like, we just think Finlay's got an edge defensively. We think there's a lot of action likely to happen around the ruck defensively and, and we, um, and We've been delighted with Cam's form and in a different type of game that, that might have gone slightly differently, but this one here, we're, we've, we've gone for that. Hi Ian, Ashton here from Off the Bottom Ireland. It's nice to be here. I just wondered, uh, do you think that the respect levels have changed for Ireland, not just from the All Blacks, but from many nations over the last maybe year or two with those, the journey that they're on? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think, um, well, look, I think there's always been, been respect. There's always respect for, amongst teams at the international game, you know. We, um, and, and so it's, this is not just something from the last 12 months. It's something been brewing for the last five or six years in Ireland. So, look, they've done a superb job and earned the position they're in, like I said earlier. So, um, 
you know, and, and then, then when they get the upper hand on you a few times, naturally you, you respect them because it hurts. But um, look, you, you just got to take your hat off to, to their form, their, their run of wins, done well. Um, but again, we, we, we start the game at nil all and let's get stuck in. It should be a great game. Ian, can you tell us what the breach of post goal was, please? I'm not going to talk about it again. All I can say it's minor. It's minor. Could I just ask one follow-up question? What, what does it say about the, the mindset of the team or their focus on the game if, if a player is breaching post goal? Well, it says volumes. We, we believe in what we stand for, and, and I think that speaks volumes for the team, willing to make that sort of decision in this sort of week. Was that a whole team decision? Or well, I team just team answered team that question. Sorry. Sorry. In, uh, you've selected your two um, young props, uh, <coughs> Torrell and Ethan, and you've got two even younger guys on the bench backing them up. Can you just talk through those calls and I guess the omission of the two old guard of Offer and uh, Lepa? Yeah, tough. Um, you know, we're, we've got six props, three hookers that we're probably happy to start them all at the moment. So everyone's fit, healthy, and we just feel it's the right mix. You know, I think um, probably a little bit of mobility uh, and, and I guess agility defensively is probably the, the one catalyst in that. We, we feel the scrum's going well regardless of who goes in there, so we're confident with the scrum side of it. But um, just the areas that we believe we're going to get challenged and we need to challenge Ireland that uh, Fletcher and Tamari just give us a little bit more in that space this week. Ian, excuse me, uh, Justin Tracy from Irish TV. Ian, you were all tempted to go with Danny McKenzie at fullback? Yeah, go through everything. You know, he's playing well. Um, but like the combinations we're getting um, and like the the fact we've got a we've got a sort of a change up option as the game unfolds, and 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 I think that the trio of, of Richie and Bodie and and Damien's working really well for us in, in whichever format we have. So, um, but uh, but also really delighted with Richie's form and with Bodie's form. So it's a you know it's tough always tough decisions, and but the great thing is that you know Damien's come in and really put his hand up with his form and, and he gives us some good. A good impact off that bench. Yeah, you know that Ireland has never been past the stage of a rugby world cup. Can you, as a squad, play on that at all on Saturday? Uh, look, Ireland came in the World Cup last year as number one, didn't they? Just before the World Cup, so I mean they've they, they they've walked different journeys. Um, but like I said earlier, look, the past is a past. I, I think it's probably a, a slightly newer. It's a, I wouldn't say it's a newer Irish team, but it's an Irish team on, on, a, on a mission. It's, a, it's an all back team on a mission. And so, you know, I think um, I'll leave it to you to talk about the past and what that means and the burdens and everything everyone carries. But at the end of the day, we, we all carry burdens going to these sort of games. And the, and, the, and the key thing is to clear your head and just play. And that's the state we want to be in. Well, it gives us um, confidence that we know what it's about, and um, you know, there's no doubt. Like in my time, we went into 2015, and, and we had to deal with the, the demons of France and Cardiff, and everyone was talking about 207, and and. Um, and then, like I said, in, in 2019, it was all about playing a red-hot Irish team that had beat us the year before and coming to the tournament number one. So there's a lot of a lot of synergies if you look at the past. But what we have learned is that the real lesson is that it doesn't mean anything. What what means is the only thing that means anything is how you play on the night. And you know, like I said, we've been preparing well. I think the last month, ready to go, and I'm sure they have too. So uh, should be a great game. Ian, um, straight down the middle. Uh, Wayne Barnes, referee. Do you get a chance, like you usually do, to have a chat with him? So, what will be discussed? Uh, no, look, the refs come into the shed before the game and tell the front rows how to push and square, and, and you have a little bit 30 second conversation, and then that's about it with referees. You're not, you're not allowed to talk to them during the week. 
or afterwards so communications are quite limited but so we get our message across through Joel Jute about the sort of things that we're, we want, want to get uh, clarified and that's about it. Just a World Cup one. Yep. Um, Sam, I'll ask you this one. Um, Tommy Martin from uh, First Media Ireland. Um, you're probably aware of the support that the Irish team have been getting, uh, especially in the matches in, in, in Stade de France. Is uh, <coughs> that support quiet part of the game plan? <laughs> Yeah, well, part of the game plan is to start well, and if we're able to do that, then um, that should have a flow-on effect to keeping the crowd a little bit quiet. Unfortunately, New Zealand's a little bit further away than Ireland, so they're able to jump on a plane and get here and support their team a little bit, a little bit easier. But um, I know there'll be plenty of Kiwis there too, and um, yeah, look, obviously both teams will be trying to, to start well. It's going to be um, a heck of a test match, so the start's going to be important. Um, and yeah, I think we've seen seen the crowd getting behind them already this World Cup. Uh, but to be honest, it's it's one of the great things about playing in big stadiums at, in massive games like this is the atmosphere and the energy that's in the crowd. And um, but we'll be feeding off it either way. I think. Do you seriously think we can keep a bunch of Irish people in the crowd? <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam, just a question for you. There's been a bit of talk earlier this week about. I suppose the fear of failure for this All Blacks team. I was just wondering if you could talk to the flip side of that and the opportunity that presents itself here. We've all talked about the fact that the Irish are the number one ranked team in the world. I'm just wondering what it would do for your own confidence and what sort of message it would send if you could win this game. To be honest, that's the first time I've heard um, <laughs> that we've got a fear of Is that, is that we've, we've got a fear of failure? First time, yeah. first time <laughs> I've heard it um, all week. but. Uh, yeah, look, our mindset's absolutely, you know, it's easy to flip something like that and what if we win, what if we go out there and um, you know, start really well and what if our set piece goes exactly how we want it. So um, when you start thinking things like that and you take confidence from the hard work that's gone in and the preparation, then we absolutely go in with confidence and um, it'll just be about being able to execute what we've trained out on the training pitch out there um, under massive pressure in front of a a full crowd so and if we're able to do that and can do it consistently then yeah we'll give ourselves a really good shot of winning and um, when we get there we'll see how we feel. This will be our last one folks. Um, Sam how do you and the rest of the squad feel about the Mark Kalea incident? Is it a sense of feeling a bit let down? Oh look, to be honest, I think Foz has said pretty much everything that we're willing to say on, on it. Um, yeah. I'm not but sure how many times we can say we're not going to talk about it. We've said what we've said. 